Hey, hey, hey everyone, Tankenstein here. In this video, I've got your complete dev server overview for the Fire and Ice update. That's right, in this video, I will be showing you every single vehicle that is being shown in the dev server for the Fire and Ice update. Now, bear in mind some of the values on the dev server, so some of the values for the vehicles, uh, whether it's plane, ships, air, whatever, or tanks rather, it might not be completely accurate to what will be coming in game. Additionally, there are going to be some vehicles coming to War Thunder uh, with the newest update that are not in this dev server. So again, just keep that in mind when you are watching this video. This is not every single vehicle, but rather some of the most complete ones at this point, and also uh, probably going to be the majority of the vehicles. But there are a few that were shown in the live stream that we'll go over in this video that aren't necessarily in the dev server. Now that said, let's get into it. So first and foremost, as you can see, we have the new top dog American tank, the M1A2 SEP Tusk. This is the newest vehicle that we will be able to uh, play for the Americans. It is right there at the top of the American tech tree beyond the M1A2. And because this is such a heavily requested, heavily loved vehicle that a lot of people want, I'll just show you this here. So as you can see, it's got pretty much everything the same. One interesting thing is that this does not have a smoke grenade modification meaning that you actually get smoke grenades at least per what the dev server says you get smoke grenades automatically with this vehicle without having to modify them additionally you have the m829 shell right here and you also have the m829a2 this is the same top shell that you get with the m1a2 abrams but you also get night vision or rather thermals that are Gen 2 or possibly even Gen 3. Let me know if that's uh, what that might be in the comments below, but I believe it's just Gen 2. Either way, Gen 2, Gen 3, they look pretty much the same, although Gen 3 is just a little bit higher resolution. Now beyond this, the Tusk Kit. So as you can see here, you have this ERA armor or ERA on the side. It's actually an upgrade that you can get that weighs it down by almost three and a half tons. So this is a very heavy vehicle, 64.9 tons. Even the M1A2 is really, it's almost 5% less heavy than that. So it's a uh, pretty good amount. And also just to kind of show you guys, and I won't be going over this much detail with every vehicle, uh, just to kind of show you this, go to the USSR rank seven, and let's just click on the BMP2M because everyone loves that, APF SDS. Let's put that at zero degrees or zero uh, you know, meters distance. This ERA will stop it even at a almost zero degree angle, so or 90 degree angle, it will stop it from going through. Very, very impressive. And if you guys want gameplay, I do have a gameplay video for this. I'll try to link it down below. Next for the Amer so and so far as tanks are concerned, that's the only American tank in dev server that we will be getting not all too much here. Now, when it comes to American planes, there's not again all too much for American planes. We are getting one, but this is a battle pass plane. It is the A1H, and again, this is something that I do have gameplay on, link below if you guys want, but it is a very, very uh, interesting aircraft in that this is pretty much your Sky Raider, but you can equip tons of miniguns to it. So they're LMG uh, miniguns, and based on the dev server, you can have up to seven, which have 10,500 rounds in total, and you can have upwards of 17,000 rounds per minute coming from this can, from this gun, or uh, from this plane, from between the M3 cannons and the M134 miniguns, as well as a ton of napalm at 6.3 BR, plus you can actually equip countermeasures to this. So very interesting, this is the lowest BR aircraft with countermeasures, which means in theory, this could be a high BR close air support aircraft. It can actually function pretty decently at higher BR, so who knows? Next up, we have Germany. Now, insofar as the aircraft are concerned, uh, I don't believe there are any. Again, in the dev server, the dev server is pretty light when it comes to um, content, unfortunately. It doesn't look like this is going to have a ton of content in this update not that that's a bad thing because some of the vehicles in this are very well needed so we have the sonda krafatzeiger 251 slash 9 this is a german vehicle that will be coming in the update nothing all too special it's a 1.3 br half track with the short barrel 75 this also has heat f or heat shells the 38c which can go up through 100 millimeters of armor with a very quick reload rate. Time will tell if this is overpowered. It's 1.3 BR, so even if it is overpowered, there's not really too much of a worry because you are not going to have to fight it for too long because if you're in you know, one to two BR for more than a few matches, especially if you have premium time, um, you know, you should 
watch videos on how to get better in War Thunder. So, you know, don't worry about that too much. But again, you know, it's a pretty cool thing that they are bringing World War II vehicles into it. Now, as you saw, there are no helicopters, no aviation coming to Germany. There's no uh, Blue Water Fleet coming to Germany. No coast. Actually, there is a coastal vehicle. So we have the Type 152 Hugen. This is a uh, post-World War II vehicle, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, pretty interesting, just a small boat. Not really all too much going on here. Uh, you can equip some G7A torpedoes. Good torpedoes, not fantastic. Pretty interesting vehicle, but whether or not it deserves to be at this BR, I'm not sure. But interesting enough, I guess, if you're a coastal player. Not many coastal players. Most people play Blue Water, but it is what it is. Now, when it comes to Russia, again, on the dev server, uh, I don't believe we are getting anything here just kind of double scan here uh just to make sure but yes i don't believe we are getting anything in russia now interestingly i don't think we're getting anything for aircraft as well um you know i'm just trying to to look through this just because ultimately while i remember pretty much everything and i did an overview myself before making this video of course um, you know, I don't want to just go out there and say, oh, there's nothing on here and then be forgetting something. So I, I want to go through these fairly slow and just kind of look over them from that perspective. Now, we're also for England, we are getting the Bosvark. Now, this is an AA vehicle in the South African tech tree. Pretty interesting. This has the same cannon on the BRZ or the BTRZ, whatever it is uh, that you can get for the Russians that came out in the most recent update, if I'm not mistaken. And it's basically just a gigantic flak wagon. This thing is a huge vehicle and, you know, it's not really incredible, but it has 51 millimeters of armor pen at max. It's got a great fire rate. And it's got a lot of crew. And interestingly, and this was pointed out on the dev server um, live stream from War Thunder, there's a chance that even though these two could, could die, you also have these people in here that could take over. So they're separated far enough. And they also, in theory, have some hull armor over top of them, where if during a strafing run, let's say from LMGs, these guys might not die. And so you could actually have crew to replace these guys. So Pretty interesting design. I don't really know if it's going to be amazing. The skink is probably still going to be better, but pretty cool. Next up, we have the Churchill Crocodile. Now, this is War Thunder's first flamethrowing tank. That's correct. Flamethrower. We have a flamethrower in War Thunder. Now, I tried playing this in, um, you know, just, just seeing if it will work. I have not had any luck with this for whatever reason, you know, for example, this doesn't appear to actually be working. Like the fuel tank, you can't even shoot through it. It's not appearing as an in-game asset outside of the fact that, you know, if you shoot it, it just goes right through and, and just hits the tank as though this isn't even here. So not really entirely sure uh, what the deal is with that. Let me know in the comments below if you guys have had uh, access to actually getting the flamethrower to work. But yes, we are getting a flamethrower and this is going to be a battle pass vehicle. So really, really cool. It's especially cool if they're adding a vehicle like this to battle pass and not just for the um you know for for ge because kind of like the calliope for the americans or any other like for example rocket tank those cost a ton so by having this just be a battle pass vehicle coming with battle pass very very cool even though the utility of the flamethrower is questionable it's still a very very cool thing and i have to give credit to war thunder to gaijin now a lot of people have been asking for it tornado i'm not seeing the tornado anywhere in here uh they did not mention that in the dev stream so unfortunately it doesn't look like it's coming now i did hear some rumors that there may be an f-16 of the game files now that doesn't mean that's coming out in this update bear in mind but it could mean that maybe they're working on it and that they have a plan for it in the next update or two there is always almost always going to be an update that comes out before new year's so somewhere around christmas or just before christmas so if you guys want some info on that i'll try to link that below i do actually have a calendar video that goes over where all the updates are now as you saw, there's nothing in the British aviation, nothing in blue water, nothing in coastal. Really, the only thing that we're getting are the Bosfark and the Churchill Crocodile, 
And again, this is a Battle Pass vehicle, whereas this is the newest update, Fire and Ice. Now, one notable thing that's missing here is the Type 10 prototype. Now, the Type 10 prototype was shown in the dev server live stream, but it is not in the actual dev server. So uh, Mike Goes Boom actually had access to this. It's pretty much just the Type 10. I'm sure there are some differences in it, but it looked like an 11.0 BR vehicle, same four second reload speed. Very, very cool. So Japan is getting essentially another Type 10 in the regular ground tech tree. Now, no new helicopters. I believe there might be, oh yes, of course. There is another, uh, there is a new vehicle coming to Japan and it is the T2 early. So this is pretty much going to be the T2, except a little bit different in that this is a pack premium. I'm assuming it's a pack premium. I'm not 100% sure, but I believe it will probably be a pack premium just based on how they do these things. 9.7 BR and uh, this is their new top level vehicle. They took this off for sale from being a pack. Now it's a GE premium. And now this is gonna be the new top dog. And uh, there are some differences here. So it only has access to AIM-9 E's, whereas this has access to AIM-9 B's as well. But it kind of simplifies everything. Other than that, the, the lack of AIM-9 B's, which I really don't think anyone is going to miss. This is pretty much the same vehicle with the same loadouts, except it doesn't double up the loadouts. Again, with AIM-9 B's, you just have AIM-9 E's. Additionally, and so far as customization is concerned, not really anything there. Now, China, China, China is getting some interesting things, uh, mostly in the fact that it's getting a Tor M1. This is a very interesting uh, SPAA. Now, the model is not at all complete. As you can see, I mean, this thing looks like it was just molded from plastic. But this is a SAM launcher that just launches missiles straight up and then they target towards the enemy. So very interesting. As you can see, they are all right here. Uh, very good missiles. So they have around 16 Gs of maximum overload, 8.16 kilograms of TNT equivalent. Very interesting. Plus it has IRST and radar tracking. So it's a uh, pretty, pretty cool vehicle. Now we are not going to be getting any aircraft if I'm not mistaken for the Chinese. So. Um, you know, at least as of right now, the J-8B and the F-5E are the top dogs for the Chinese tech tree. And also, why is the F-5A and the F-5E, why are those the same BR, I wonder? Let me know in the comments below. I've noticed that before. This isn't the first time I've noticed it, but uh, I, I am certainly curious. Now, the Italians are getting a new vehicle, not something that I think most people are going to care for. So before we had the AS-42, this is an SPAA. Now we're getting the AS4247. This has a 47 millimeter cannon on it. And in typical Italian fashion, you have a guy controlling it at the front. And then you have this guy here. Both of them are totally exposed and will die very, very easily. This is just a ridiculous vehicle that, you know, it's cool that it's coming to War Thunder, but America is getting the M1A2 SEP uh, Tusk and the Italians are getting the meme mobile. <laughs> so there are no other vehicles as far as I could tell in the Italian ground tech tree that are coming, but hey, you know, at least they're kind of getting something. Now, next up we have, uh, well, the Italian air tech tree is not getting anything out there. I almost kind of thought that they were, but they are not. They're not getting anything blue water, uh, nor are they getting anything coastal. Like I said, this is not going to be the largest update ever. And I think one of the reasons for it is because they are really focusing a lot on their anniversary. Maybe they didn't put as much time into content on this, especially being that the Swedish or the Finnish, uh, Finnish tech tree and the Swedish tech tree is a little bit copy paste, but not entirely. So for the French, we have the Santal, which is a rank six, 9.3 BR, um, AA, SPAA, uh, missile firing SPAA. Pretty cool. It's got mistrals, nothing incredible, but you know, it's another cool thing and I believe that this acts as the lowest level yes it does lowest level missile firing AA for the French which is going to be kind of a problem because this is a 9.3 BR aircraft as a lot of people might know you kind of have some level of you know ease at around 9.0 8.7 BR now that the French are going to have this especially once more and more people get it it might be kind of tough to fight the French in, uh, in ground force, especially if you have close air support. So that's gonna be a little bit of a worry. Now, insofar as aircraft are concerned, as far as I could tell, nothing uh, for the French. 
but for the Swedish, yes, we are getting the Swedish, uh, huge additions to the Swedish, mostly for ground, but there is also going to be some air edition. So we have the T28. Now the BT42 is likely not coming. They did mention it, uh, but it's likely not going to be coming in this update just because they still have a lot of work to do. But like I said, you have the T28. I mean, just some pretty standard stuff. T-34, 1941. Uh, again, these are all Swedish vehicles. The Panzer IV. And I really love how this is just... how I love the green. It looks great. And then you can add some... Just kind of add some vehicle... Like, look at that. How cool is that? Like, genuinely. It just looks so awesome. Some of the, the Finnish... Uh, camouflages are so cool. And I'll show you some really cool ones in a moment here. Get the PT-76B. So I believe that's got the stabilizer. Comet 1, T-34-85. Um, also, you get the ZSU-57, which is really, really cool. So that'll be a new SPAA that will plug the gap a bit between the uh, LV-KW or KV and also the V-40. So pretty cool that that's being added. But again, a lot of these are copy-paste. T-54-1951. Nothing incredible. I mean, it still gets the really cool camouflage, but as you get higher in VR, look at these camouflage. It's pretty cool if you ask me. And additionally, beyond that, you get the T-72 M1, which I will be doing a gameplay for. Look at that bad mamma jamma. That thing looks awesome. So this is a unique variant of the... Uh, T-72, I believe it's only available for the fins, um, but it has the 3BM-22 with 425 millimeters of armor pen, which at 9.3 BR is pretty damn decent. And you get laser rangefinder, artillery support, ESS, no thermals. Bear in mind, so this will be, uh, technologically speaking, a little bit bare bones. It's got an auto loader, but not the fastest reload. So it's a pretty cool vehicle. Uh, and then you get the Leopard 2A4. Now, they did show the Leopard 2A6 uh, NL or some variant of the 2A6 in the live stream dev server. Uh, so if you guys are curious as to why there is no 2A6, it is coming. It will just come a little bit later. And of course, you get the really cool camouflages because Finland is awesome. So that is really, really cool. Now that said, however, uh, of course, there are some, some planes as well. Um, now, interestingly, just to kind of point this out, a lot of people were kind of complaining, rightfully so, that there wasn't really too much to fill the tech tree. Now with the 2A4, now look at this 10.0 lineup. You have the uh, 9040, you have the 9040C, and also the Stridsvagen 121, and also you have another, essentially, Leopard 2A4. And also to a point, you have the T-72M1, uh, which can still function at 10.0. So not all too bad. Now for aviation, it's a little bit less impressive. You get the Fokker, uh, what, DXXI? I'm not going to pronounce that in Roman, uh, you know, Roman letters or numerals, but you get that. Pretty cool. It's pretty much this, except with LMGs rather than uh, HMGs or cannons, rather. So it's just kind of a, a downgrade, essentially. You get the BF-109 G2. Very, very cool. The Junkers 88A4. Again, very cool. This helps fill the gap. This helps fill the gap, make a, a much stronger 4.3 lineup as if they didn't already have a very strong 4.3 BR lineup. The Vampire FV-52A. Uh, I was kind of wondering if that would be a premium variant, but it will not be. But this is a pretty high BR variant, 8.0 BR. Uh, again, these things are subject to change, so it could change before the update comes out. And finally, we are getting the J-34, which is a Hawker Hunter. So pretty damn cool. This only has AIM-9Bs, or really the equivalent thereof, RB-24s. Nothing fantastic but still really, really cool. And we're not getting any additional helicopters, but this finished ground tech tree is going to make the 5.0 BR, give or take grind, much, much better for the Swedes. I mean, it is just so rough. And actually, as you can see here, I stopped grinding around 5.7 because I hate that BR lineup. This is gonna make it so much better and make top tier a bit more livable. So really cool. I am a huge fan of that. And also for the uh, Is Israel Ground Forces Tech Tree, we are getting a new SPAA. This is a 4.7 BR SPAA, which is going to be the lowest BR vehicle in the Israeli Ground Tech Tree. Basically, it just has uh, some uh, an LMG plus also two 20 millimeter cannons. Pretty cool. Nothing fantastic. Just your standard gun mounted SPAA, uh, which is, I guess, cool. But again, nothing crazy. Then you have the ZSU-57, which is, of course, 
pretty normal. This is standard. Awesome that Israel's is getting this, but uh, beyond the utility of destroying tanks, I'm not really sure exactly how good that'll be. And then, of course, you get the ZSU-23-4, which, again, very cool. But, um, you know, I, I think that this is a very cool and obviously an awesome thing that they are bringing this to the ground force detectory for Israel because, you know, more SPA, the better, but they don't yet have a missile guided SPAA. So, unfortunately, you know, they're still going to be suffering a little bit in that way, but at least they have some level of, uh, of additional SPAA here. Not necessarily that they need it so much, but it always helps to, to have more SPAA. That being said, that's about it. You know, like I said, there are going to be other vehicles coming in the uh, regular server. I've heard, like I said, rumors about the F-16. Not sure if that's going to happen, but if it does happen, that would be rad. Either way, thanks so much for watching, everyone. Please like, comment, subscribe. Let me know in the comments below what you guys think about this video if you are excited about this update because, honestly, I'm really excited about the M1A2 Sept Tusk. This vehicle, I like I said in my test drive, very, very impressed by it, and uh, it is a beast. Either way, thanks again, guys, and I'll see you all on the other side. Take care, everyone.